Hello, I'm Rani and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make a traditional fish curry. So we start with the ingredients. We've got mustard seeds, fenugreek seeds, iridal, fresh curry leaves, golden shallots, garlic, my fish curry powder that I've made, tamarind juice, salt, and coconut cream. Now the important thing when you start is to wait for the oil to get hot because you want the mustard seeds to pop. Okay, so you put in the mustard seeds and listen for the popping sound, it's very important. Then you add the fenugreek seeds. The uridal, some fresh curry leaves, and stand back because they do splatter. The golden shallots, and give it a good stir. Every time I make this curry, it takes me back to Mauritius. Every time I go home for a visit, my auntie has this curry ready and waiting for me. She knows it's my favorite. I'm able to make it myself, but it still tastes best when she makes it. She did teach me most of the cooking that I know. So you let the golden shallot soften, and you might notice in this curry we don't use any ginger. So we just let them soften up, and once they become translucent, we put in some garlic. And just let that cook for a little while. One nice thing about this curry is that it's gluten-free and dairy-free, so suitable for a wide number of people. Once you start to smell the garlic cooking, it's time to move on to the next step. This is my fish curry powder that I make, but you can always use one from the Indian shops if you can't get mine. There's one brand called Baba's that's pretty good. And you just add it in. And remember, you can add a bit more or a bit less in a little while if you think it's going to be not the right amount for you. But I like my curry quite strong. And this is some tamarind that's been uh, mixed with some water and strained for the seeds to be removed. At this point, you let it cook for a couple of minutes because you want to get rid of the raw taste of tamarind. You want the sourness from it, but not the raw taste. And I put in a bit of salt. And just give it a minute. The smell always takes me back home. So now I'm putting in some coconut milk. Some people don't use coconut milk. They like to use water instead. So that part is up to you, but I like the creaminess that the coconut milk gives. So just give that a good stir. And remember, when cooking, the important thing to, to do as you go along is to taste. So you give it a taste and see if you are happy with the amount of spice, the amount of coconut. Try to look for the balance of hot, sour, and salty. This dish, you don't need the sweet because it's a very savory dish. So I've got some fresh ling fillets here. Some people like to lightly fry it if they're using a white fish, but I find there's no need. If it's not fried, the spices can be better absorbed into the fish. Now remember the fish will uh, release a bit of water, so it, the curry will not be as thick as it looks now. So that takes about two or three minutes to cook, depending on the thickness of the fish. Remember not to overcook it, because fish isn't very nice. If it's been cooked too long, it gets rubbery. So just give that a few minutes, and your fish curry will be ready. Some people put bits of fried eggplant in it at this point, or slices of very hard green mango. So if you want to do that, now is the time to do it, when the fish is almost cooked. At this point, you can see that the fish is releasing a bit of water, so the sauce is not quite as thick as it was earlier. And that's a sign that it's almost ready. Now the way you know it's ready is if you can cut into the fish with a spoon and you can see the flakiness of the fish. And that's how you know it's ready. It's better to slightly undercook it 
then overcook it because it will continue cooking as you're serving it. So this is my fish curry. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy making it.